Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, and this is the message translation. Jesus told them a story showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. He said, there was once a judge in some city who never gave God a thought and cared nothing for people. A widow in that city kept after him. My rights are being violated. Protect me. He never gave her the time of day. But after this went on and on, he said to himself, I care nothing for what God thinks, even less what people think. But because this widow won't quit badgering me, I'd better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up beaten black and blue by her pounding. Then the master said, Do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his people who continue to cry out for help? Won't he stick up for them? I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Baseball is just a game. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you, but it was a late night for me watching the Yankees lose last night. I thought I'd go to bed after the seventh inning stretch, saying, take me out to the ball game, take me to bed. I ended up watching the whole game. Great, great game. Tough ending. I, I noticed some of you are also a little bleary-eyed. Well, at least we'll get a little more sleep we who are Yankees fans, we'll get a little more sleep this, this month. Did you know that Take Me Out to the Ball Game was an anthem for feminists and an anthem for those who are advocating for the 19th Amendment? I just learned this, read an article in the Smithsonian Magazine that Jack Norworth, who wrote this, was um, he wrote it in 1908. He was dating a woman named, I gotta, write, I gotta read this because I always forget her name, Trixie Freganza. Have you ever heard of Trixie Freganza? Trixie Freganza was a suffragette who was advocating for the vote for all women. The 19th Amendment was first brought before Congress in this country in 1878. It didn't pass until 1919. It wasn't made law until 1920. Trixie and many of her colleagues, men and women, had been working hard for a very long time to get women the vote. Well, when Jack was dating Trixie, this suffragette vaudevillian, he really appreciated her leadership and her ability to go into predominantly male circles and lead. And so when he wrote, take me out to the ball game, he wrote a very obscure verse that none of us sing when we go to the games, and it's about um, a woman fan of baseball who is invited out on a date and the invitation is to go to a show and she says no I don't want to go to the show take me out to the ball game take me out with the crowd buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks I don't care if I ever get back for it's root 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 for the home team I don't if they don't win, it's a shame for it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. The rest of that lyric has this woman protagonist cheering, leading the crowd at the ball game, knowing each player's first name and arguing with the umpire. 
And when people used to sing all of those lyrics, it became an anthem for feminists, an anthem for those who are seeking justice for women. And I find it appropriate to be musing about that song as this scripture comes up of the persistent widow and the unjust judge. This persistent widow did not give up until fairness, justice, the vote that went her way, went her way. The judge is said in the scriptures, he didn't care about God and he didn't care about anyone else. He sounds kind of like a very selfish person, but she kept haranguing him and persisting. For in that time, widows had no rights, had no access to money, power, a livelihood, shelter. It was at the mercy of the community if a widow was going to survive. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, the prophets were always calling Israel to care well for the widows, those who had no rights, those who had no privileges, those who had no access. This widow keeps persisting to this unjust judge who gets tired of her. And he relents and gives her justice. And Jesus lifts up this parable by saying, don't give up on prayer. Don't lose heart. Keep praying. Now that's a good word. I, I'm very aware of many of us who in our prayer lives feel kind of dry. If your prayer life is good and fruitful and wonderful, praise God, you can tune me out for the rest of the sermon. But I've had people who worship with us online contact me and say, you know, I've been watching your sermons and I I don't feel like my prayer life is very good. I feel like my prayer life is just barren and like a desert and I don't even know if I want to pray or if I can pray. I don't know how to pray. I've had numerous conversations with people recently about that dryness in prayer life. And so if you're in that category and you would ever like to have a conversation with me about that, send me an email. Give me a call. We'll go out for coffee or we'll meet here and talk about prayer, the mystery of prayer and how it may be a call to discover a new way of praying because very often the ways we used to pray meet a threshold and they're no longer meaningful to us or they're no longer moving in our lives. They're no longer giving us a sense of closeness to God or they're no longer making us aware of being present to the presence. That's what prayer is, being present to the presence. And sometimes that has little to do with words, but much more to do with intent and what's going on in the heart. You've heard me talk about this before. Sometimes we feel like when our praying is not being answered the way we want, we feel like our prayers are either inadequate or we are inadequate or God is inadequate. Sometimes God answers yes to our prayers. Sometimes God answers no to our prayers for reasons that we discover later on are really for our own interest. Sometimes God says, grow. You need to grow or someone else needs to grow before this prayer can be answered. Yes, no, grow, slow. Sometimes God says, I will answer this, but it will be a slow answer. And it may take a while. 
So keep praying, keep seeking God out, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. Sometimes I sense that we are looking for a mountaintop experience. Friends, if, if you've ever had a mountaintop experience with God, praise God, give thanks, but don't expect it often or even again. Sometimes those are moments that are to keep us going and to reflect back on but they're not ongoing. Rarely are they ongoing. Rarely do people have mountaintop experiences, but Jesus is talking about being persistent in prayer. Maybe our prayer when we're in those barren desert times is, God, who are you? God, who am I? Maybe we're in that when we're in that honest space, it's, God, I don't know who you are, but I trust you. Maybe when we're honest, our prayer is, God, I don't know who I am, but I'm yours. We often worry about our futures. Maybe we need to just say to God, God, I don't even know how to pray this, but here's my future. Here's my path. I don't know which direction to go in, but here it is. And it's helpful to front load our concerns with prayer because that gives God a greater chance to shape our, our path and our, our journey. Maybe the only prayer we can pray is thank you and pick something. Pick something in your day that you can be grateful for. Here's the practical application to the sermon. At the end of every day, just thank God for something, one thing, every day, for a month, and see what happens. See if you start spotting God's handiwork in more and more places. Do any of you have kids in your household who are planning your um, Halloween costume? I know some of you do. Um, I read a wonderful reflection on one of the best Halloween costumes that this writer saw. She was a kid, she was growing up in a college town, not unlike Madison, New Jersey. And these college kids, uh, they dressed up as older women. Now, I know that's problematic, but they did. They brought with them a huge door with a frame so the door could open. They walked down the block. At each house, they would do this ritual. They would put the door about five feet from the front door of the house that they were about to knock on. One of them would reach around, ring the doorbell, get behind the door. The people in the house would open the door and they would see this door facing them. And the college kids would then open the door and say, oh, you are so cute. And they would give candy to the person who was living in the house. <laughs> and then they would close the door and walk on to the next neighbors. <laughs> it's one of those scenes that just turns trick-or-treating on its head. I'm coming around the final turn on this. Jesus often tells parables that are short stories with big meaning that often turn things upside down at the very end. For most of my life, I thought this parable was equating the unjust judge with God. The widow was pleading with this one who had power. The call to be persistent in prayer is us 
pleading with God to relent? What kind of God would that be? Scholars at deeper levels of understanding the spiritual nature of this parable are saying, the judge is not the God image. The God image is the widow who keeps coming to humankind. The unjust judge is actually humankind. God keeps coming in the guise of the widow to humankind saying, would you care for me? It's throughout the Hebrew Scriptures. The prophets are always saying to humankind and to those in leadership, care for the widow, would you? Care for the orphan, would you? Care for the downtrodden, would you? And in the New Testament, we hear Jesus saying, I am going to come to you in costume. I'm going to be in costume, looking like hungry people, thirsty people, naked people, imprisoned people, foreign people. And the disciples said to Jesus, when did we see you as that? And he said, when you cared for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you cared for me. God is persistent and coming to us always, everywhere, knocking on the doors of our hearts, saying, open the door. Let me in. Amen.